At some point, these kids are going back to school, right? Hi, I'm Leslie at L Squared Crafts. Welcome back to my channel. Back to school means school supplies. And if you're like me, you don't wanna to go to the store. So let's make our own. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make these great pencil pouches. What I love about them is they're super fast. They're really easy to make. You can pick any fabric that you want. Let's dive in. I have already cut my exterior and lining fabrics at about 9 inches by 12 inches and lined the front exterior panel with SF101. After I interfaced the front exterior panel, I cut off 2 inches of that panel and the lining piece to be on the other side of the zipper. I prepared an 11 inch zipper. On what will be the back of the pouch, I interfaced it with something called Decoville Heavy. It is um, a sturdy interfacing and it's the first time I've used it. So you wanna make sure you keep it out of your seam allowance or anywhere you're gonna stitch. So you'll notice I have about a one inch perimeter to the raw edges on all sides of that Decoville Heavy. You're also going to want some grommets. These are 12 millimeter grommets and you'll need a press or some way to install those grommets. I'm using a cam snap press with the appropriate dies. For the panel that's going to hold the grommets, I'm using waterproof canvas. It's wonderful because it's real sturdy and it doesn't require any interfacing. I want the finished size of this panel to be 11 inches long, so I'm tucking about a half inch on each short end in to hide the raw edges, and then I'm going to top stitch just to make it pretty. Just to prove how fast and easy this project is, I'm not speeding up the video of me sewing. So this is actual time how long this project takes. And just like that, your grommet panel is finished and you can set that aside for now. Now let's make the front panel. But you want to take your front panel this is the one that you cut two inches off of, so it's gonna be a little bit narrower than the other panel. And you're gonna place your zipper face down on that front panel. Make sure you have, if you have directional fabric, make sure the top of your fabric is pointing, is where the zipper goes. Just center this zipper on that panel as best you can. to start sewing with that zipper head a little bit out of the way so that's why I've pulled it down. We're going to take this to the sewing machine and just baste that onto that front panel at about a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, less than quarter of an inch. The hope is not to see those stitches that you're sewing right now in the finished product. When you get towards the zipper head be sure you stop with your needle down in the project and then lift your presser foot and just move that zipper head out of the way and keep sewing. Next, 
Next we'll attach the lining that goes with this panel. Remember it too will be two inches shorter than the other lining piece that you cut, so make sure you grab the right one. The lining fabric I'm using for this is called uh, Ripstop. It's sort of like a parachute material. It's not um, waterproof, but it is tear resistant, and I thought that would be great for inside a pencil pouch where you have scissors and sharp pencils and things. You want to attach the lining stitching just on the inside of where you just previously stitched, hiding those basting stitches I was talking about. So I like to flip mine upside down sort of so that I can see where I just sewed and sew right next to that. Again, when you get close to that zipper head, just make sure you stop with your needle down and move that zipper head out of the way. Next we're going to top stitch this panel and you're going to fold it wrong sides together. If you have an iron heated up, this would be a good time. I honestly, I wasn't sure if I could iron on that ripstop fabric or not, so I never turned my iron on for this whole project. But obviously ironing in between steps is ideal, otherwise you just have to really make sure, as I am, that your panels are lining up and that you're not um, getting bunched up at that zipper when you top stitch. Now would be a good time to talk about the elephant in the room, and that is that my lining panel is not the same size as my exterior fabric panel because I didn't pay attention when I was cutting them. So I'm moving along as though that didn't happen, and soon you will see me trimming off the excess. Hey, these things happen. That's right, nothing to see here. Nobody notice. I'm certain this happens to everybody and they just edit it out of their videos. At least I'm being real. All right, we are still working on this front panel. We've got to attach that top zipper panel, the little two inches that we cut off of there. So take the exterior fabric, make sure you have it facing the way you want it to go, and lay that zipper face down just like we did on the first side centering the zipper on that little strip. In addition to lining it up along the top, make sure it's lining up on the sides also. Right here is where you're going to base this on at about a quarter of an inch. Now we have to add the lining. Again, you want to sew just inside those basting stitches, so I always flip mine over to the other side so I can see them.
am just trimming off that overhang from my miscalculation from before. And now you're just going to put these wrong sides together. If you have that hot iron, this is the time for, to press that nicely, but I'm just going to give it a finger press and then top stitch along that zipper. So take that grommet panel that we made in the beginning and find the center mark of it. I did this by folding it in half and then I cut a little, little bitty notch out of it right there. And I will do that to the front panel as well to find the center of that. Now you can line up those notches and pin it in place. We are going to baste around the entire perimeter of this front panel just to hold all the layers together and make it one piece. this project in general, when I baste, I baste at a quarter inch and when I attach things together it's between a quarter and a half inch together. Be sure as you approach that grommet tab that you are not sewing it down right here. You do want to attach it on the long end but not on the short end. see right here I'm taking extra care to make sure that I have come far enough away from the grommet tab towards the shorter side so that this basting stitch is not going to be seen in the final pouch. Alright, this front panel is finished. Now let's work on the back. Make sure on this panel that you have it facing the direction you want it to end up, with the up facing up. Next, we're going to attach the lining directly to this panel. And to do that, you're going to put them wrong sides together. I'm going to pin these two together. As you can see, I have cut the lining too big again, and so I'm just pinning them together as best I can 
and I'm going to do the basting stitch at a quarter of an inch around the perimeter. Right here I'm just trimming off the excess lining fabric. I am not trimming down the seam allowance. We're going to do that after the next step. Okay, what I'm trying to show you here is that it is really important that you open your zipper before you sew these two panels together. If you don't open your zipper, you've just made something you have to throw away. So what do you need to do? Open your zipper! Then you're going to place the back panel right sides together with the front panel. And we're going to sew all around the perimeter at a half inch. Make sure you stay out of the zipper tab area if you made zipper tabs. And also, super important, don't stitch down that grommet panel because we need it to come flat, you know, pull out later. I think it's kind of important to backstitch at the beginning and the end, obviously, every time you sew, but also to backstitch at the beginning and end of that zipper area because that's going to get yanked on a lot. All day, every day, your kid's going to open that zipper. So be sure you make that nice and strong right there. So right now, I'm feeling for that grommet panel just to make sure I don't sew over it. On the long edge, you're going to sew over the grommet panel because that's what holds it in the bag. Just the short ends you don't want to sew down.
here's where you're going to trim down your seam allowance. So I start with the corners and I trim the corners nice and close to the stitch line but not cutting the stitches. And then I trim my seams to about a quarter of an inch. Right now is when you're going to be really glad you remembered to open that zipper. We're going to turn the pouch right side out. And that Decoville Heavy is very stiff, but you just feel free to manhandle that thing. It's going to be fine. go through the corners and poke them out with my fingers first and then I just reach for this ruler which honestly I've never used that ruler as a turning tool before but it worked out pretty well um, you just want something to poke those corners out a chopstick works really well um, I've seen people use the point of scissors but be careful you don't poke all the way through and uh, you just want to poke that out again a hot iron would be great right now I didn't go to the trouble The last sewing you're going to do on this is just to top stitch around the bottom part of the bag. It's sort of like a French seam to hide those raw edges. If you use zipper tabs like I did and that little space bothers you, I felt like maybe a pencil could get through there. So when I do my top stitching, I'm going to stitch that down right there. last thing we have to do, and it's kind of the most fun part of it, is to install these grommets. And um, as you have borne witness, I am a terrible measurer. So I'm using paper in order to determine where the grommets should go. I'm using that as my guide to mark the centers.
Next, let's talk about these grommets. There are two sides to each grommet. The male piece has a really pretty front to it, and the female piece has kind of an ugly side and a less ugly side. So you kind of determine which side you want to use on the front. I, I chose the male side to be on the front and the least ugly side of the female side to be on the back before I press it. I'm just going to use the male piece to draw out the circle that I'm going to need to remove. I'm centering that over the dot that I just made and I'm drawing a little circle. Next you have to cut out the center. So I'm going to get it started with a seam ripper just so I can get my scissors in there and trim out the circle I just drew. trimming out those circles, go conservative because you want the grommet to fit snugly in that hole. You can always remove more, but you can't put it back once you've cut it off, so go easy on those holes. Just double check that you're putting the pretty side on the front of the pouch and then put it through the hole, and I'm going to show you how snugly it needs to fit. See? No gaps. Put the female piece on over that, and then take it to the grommet press. Again, I probably should have edited this to hide the fact that I have no upper arm strength in my left side at all. Uh, I had to press on this three times and move it all around to get it so that I could use my body weight to push this down. It's kind of embarrassing. But you'll see it kind of click when it when it does what it's supposed to do. Right about here. And then you know it's set. There it goes. And then just install the other two the same way. So by making this fun, quick craft, you can make something they'll enjoy, and when every time they look at it during their school day, they'll think of you and how much you love them. Thanks for watching my channel. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching.